Introduction to Raw Feeding for Dogs, Part 1. Dogs have been feeding themselves for thousands of years, so us humans should be able to figure it out. After all, it's not rocket science. When Jessie started showing some reactivity problems, I took her to the vet to rule out health issues. It turns out she has a lower than normal thyroid operation and possibly some adrenal gland issues. Nothing treatable by veterinarian standards, but still a possible cause of anxiety and other behavior issues. Since food is a major factor I can control, I decided to change her diet from kibble to my version of raw to see if it would help her. That would rule out allergies to specific foods and additives which can cause improper thyroid function. The basic ratios you need to know to keep your dog healthy are roughly 80-10-10. 80% muscle meat including heart, 10% bone, and 10% organ meat. There's a wide margin of error in this ratio, it's only a guideline. You can add up to 10 to 15% fruit and vegetable matter if you believe, as I do, that dogs are opportunists and omnivores, not obligate carnivores. Studies of wolf scats in the southern hemisphere show that during the summer, wolves regularly eat up to 40% of fruit and grasses. The prey model, or meat only, is based on the diet of the North American timber wolf, which eats much less fruit and grasses in the summer. According to the latest theory, wolves actually evolved into dogs in the last 14,000 years or so. They hung around human settlements, eating leftovers like fruit, grains, and even human waste. How much do you feed? 2-3% to of your dog's body weight daily. On the lower side for less active dogs, and the higher for more active dogs. For example, Jessie weighs about 30 pounds. She is not a physically active dog. She needs about 6 tenths of a pound of food per day, divided into two meals. This includes her training treats. I weigh each meal on a kitchen scale. It's not exact. Some days she gets a little more or a little less. It all evens out in the end. I started with 3% but found that she gained weight quickly. I reduced the amount of food to find the right amount to maintain her ideal weight. To supplement or not to supplement. Some people prefer to supplement the diet for fear their dog is not getting the proper nutrition. You can add kelp for minerals, brewer's yeast for vitamin B, active yogurt for probiotics, unpasteurized apple cider vinegar for enzymes. Some people do not supplement at all and their dogs stay healthy and active. Remember that adult dogs do not need all their nutritional needs met in one meal or even in a week. As long as they get what they need over a month or so, they'll be fine. How did I start? Cold turkey. One day Jessie ate kibble, the next I started her on raw. It's that easy. I actually started with ground raw meat bone-in that's commercially available. It was easy to thaw a one-pound chunk and feed it to her over two days. Our supplier was not reliable, so when I ran out, I experimented on my own after looking at the ingredient list. It was cheaper than the commercially prepared meat. Step one, choose one kind of meat and stick to it for about three weeks to see how your dog tolerates it. Feed only muscle meat to start. Many people start with skinless chicken breast. These chunks of muscle meat are beef heart. Jessie prefers when I cut her meal into smaller chunks for her. Other dogs are happy with big chunks. Pure meat suppers are usually consumed quickly. In this case, 30 seconds or less. Choose unenhanced meat, no flavoring, antibiotics, dyes, etc. Watch for sales, buy cheapest cuts or old meat that's at a discount. Ask friends and family for freezer burn meats or advertise on the internet classifieds. Lots of ideas. Some people use wild meat such as moose, deer, duck, goose, and even roadkill. Treat wild meat for parasites by freezing at 5 degrees Fahrenheit for a minimum of 20 days. This may not kill all parasites. Step 2. If your dog tolerates that well, start adding pieces with bone, such as foul backs or breast. This helps the dog learn that she has to chew the bone. Licking or playing with it is not unusual the first few times. With Jessie, I cut up bigger pieces like turkey necks into single vertebrae. I started by hand feeding them so she learned she needed to chew them. I gradually increased the piece size, two, three, four vertebrae, etc., once she learned she needed to carefully chew. Here she tackles a quarter pound base of a turkey neck. See how she's learned to use her back teeth to shear off a single vertebrae? 
each vertebrae is a nice bite-sized piece for her. The towel keeps her bed clean and is easy to wash. She doesn't like getting her feet dirty and never uses them when chewing raw meat or bones. She also comes to me to wipe her face on a towel after she's done. As she crunches the bones, her back teeth are cleaned. This piece took her about four and a half minutes to eat. Experts advise avoid feeding weight-bearing bones such as legs as they may wear down your dog's teeth significantly. However, I give Jessie a beef bone as an occasional recreational bone since she loves to chew and enjoys licking the marrow. Step 3. Try adding small amounts of organ meat with muscle meat and bone. Organ meat is very rich and can cause diarrhea in dogs that are not accustomed to it. Go back to meat and bone only for a few days. Then, when the stools are back to normal, add a smaller amount and some veggies. Step 4. Start leaving a little skin on the meat. As you progress, you may still need to make a cut through the skin to expose the meat. Eventually, most dogs learn to eat it skin and all, with no help from you. When given a choice, Jessie will first eat the meat without the skin. Here she toys with the skin-covered chicken wing before eating it. But once she flips it over and smells the meat, she decides it is edible after all. Crunch, 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 leads to shiny white teeth. Step 5. Look at the amount of fat in the food. How much fat your dog needs depend on how active she is and the air temperature around the dog. Less active house dogs only need a small amount, such as 10% of food. High energy working dogs may require as much as 40% fat in a cold environment. Step 6. If after a month or so your dog is doing well on one meat, try a second kind. To maintain a dog, some people suggest that red meat should be fed as the main meat, but I know people with healthy dogs who have fed only all white meat, chicken, turkey, rabbit, fish, etc., for the dog's life. Again, it's not an exact science. Fruit and vegetables can be added at any time if you know your dog tolerates these well. For example, if you'd been feeding them as treats before starting raw. Or you can introduce them one at a time to see if your dog likes each one. Avoid feeding raw garlic and onions, grapes and raisins, green potatoes, and other dog toxic foods. Fruit and veggies, especially squashes like raw and cooked pumpkin, can be added to meals with a high percentage of bone, such as when the dog gets backs or necks, to offset the possibility of constipation or with organ meat to prevent diarrhea. Give feeding raw a try. You might be surprised at the results. Jessie now has a wave in her coat that she's never had before. Her fur is thicker and healthier. She also has small poops that are not stinky. She is now an enthusiastic eater and I use chunks of her supper as a high value reward for training. After three months, the jury is still out whether it's helped her thyroid or adrenals.